Potter's Journal. It is June 14th, 2022. Time to get a summer studio session going. Actually, this year I never really closed down. Normally I do for greenhouse nursery season, growing and selling plants. Oh, this is when Ralph usually yawns as soon as I start talking to the camera. That's going to get a video off to a great start. Um, how do we get today? We'll look at um, getting started, um, uh, but also studio routine. And actually, I closed down the studio, even though I didn't close down the studio, with a um, video tour which shows all the different phases of the process. I think that's really important to have them all going at once. You can always jump into whatever part of the process you feel like that day. Um, I'm up to, what is it now, 425 pots. So um, uh, the year's not half over. I may make the thousand pot goal in the year. I didn't think that was really doable at first. Um, the other thing on how we get started, watch some pottery videos. I was um, watching Lee Bass Pottery and saw he was sporting some high fashion, okay, potters, okay, summer wear, and I thought, I have that shirt too, the Eddie, Eddie's Pottery shirt. Okay, let's see what's going on in the studio today. So, how do we get started? For me, I always start with mugs, but I didn't need any mugs. But somebody said she wanted some mugs, and they had to be bigger than the ones I had. And since she wanted a set, I said, well, I can do that. So it was just the motivation I needed to get back in the studio, fairly good size. She wants a layered glaze. So I did half of them like that. Um, the um, way I normally do is with like the white slip on the bottom, but these are so hard to get off the wheel without doing something to the slip. I don't even know how I did that. Um, so I decided on the rest of them, I was going to put, okay, some incised lines in there to catch um, a pulled and running glaze. I was digging in the garden and came up with this. And it is dated 1983. Apparently, this is not the first time I've decorated stuff like that. This is out of salt kiln. I don't have anything like that now. Um, after doing those, there was one that was a little short and a little fat. So I did a little more um, on the carving on this one. So that got me started. This is the first day back in the studio. I took a camera through on the last day of the winter spring session, even though I did keep going a little bit this year. That's um, something I'll pull out of my secret journal here in a few weeks. Um, let's take, let me show you that video look and a run through on the last day and all of the studio routine that we need to get going. The wheel is where there's heat in the, in the winter, but um, here's the bigger part of the studio. This is where, okay, everything else happens. As soon as they're done, I move them out here. This was a big story. These little bowls. And I made them, okay, and here's some bisqueware that's been moved out. Some of the projects from winter. The um, garlic grater plates in multiple sizes. Those big wavy bowls. Still a couple bisqueware that I didn't glaze all of the hearts yet. And here the bowls are again. There's a story behind them. Okay, this is probably something you'll hear more of because I'm making a lot of stuff for the olive oil guy at the farmer's market. Uh, he showed me this commercial piece for dipping um, bread in the oil, vinegar, herb mixes. So, um, um, you know, it, it's not the ideal shape or form. And what I made him was even less the ideal shape and form. I just made about 30. Um, and then the day before the first market, I thought, you know, he said he can take all I make. I made 30 more. So then he said, no, that's the wrong shape. Well, um, I, I think what it was was this is not ideal. This was even less ideal. And then I came up with, I think, what is the perfect shape for what he's doing. They go into gift baskets, and um, we'll see what happens after, okay, after 100, maybe I will have it right. 
still a few of the heart batter bowls not glazed yet from winter. Um, here are the garlic grater plates. Um, there is a stack of the big ones here. Well, they warped to have a bowed bottom. Um, I am going to put them in the biskill and stack on top of each other like that with some extra weight up here and hopefully, okay, the bow in them will fire out. We will see. Oh, and before getting into greenware and bisque and glaze, maybe I should have shown you this. I don't know. That maybe, you know, I will hold back some stuff. This is something we'll see more of. Um, 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 what were they called? Uh, tigs? Um, um, wassailing bowls? Loving cups? Okay, so this is something to stop back for another time. And there's always something put aside to get back to at a later date. However, not the um, faux wood stuff. I mean, that I should have fired, and I need to soon. Um, underneath it is where I have my clay sewer pipe stored. Um, early June is when I often do some kind of project with that. Small piece of sculpture that was never fired. Um, uh, inspired. Um, um, the inspiration was musical horn, but um, somehow it just looks like a dragon to me. And okay, bisque stuff waiting to be glazed. Um, I always hold a few pieces in reserve, so if somebody says I wanted one in that color. But um, what always holds me back is this big stuff. Okay, um, I did some of the smaller ones on the wavy bowls, but um, I need to get, how do you glaze the big stuff? So I put a tire iron over a large, I think I need to find a larger one though, that's not quite big enough. And okay, since we're just taking a see what's going on in the studio today, studio setup, you know, the glaze bench is in the wrong place. It is right on the main pathway through the studio. And this is one thing that can be a mess. And this is one thing where you do drip on the floor. And this is one thing where sometimes there are big flooding mistakes. So glaze bench, it needs to be somewhere over to the side. That's something I'll have to work out yet. But, um, we've got glazed stuff, okay, here lined up. Okay, waiting to get in the kiln. And I always like to have extra pieces glazed and some even put on the side so that when you are loading a kiln, um, if you don't have to suddenly go back to glazing to finish filling it or to fill in the small empty spots. So this is left from the last firing. And I'm just ready to open this thing. But before I do, I've got to get this off. I don't rush dry things. But these were nearly dry. It is spring, so there might have been a little moisture in them. Um, I want to make sure it was all out, so I put it on the drying kiln here. Something else that um, may go with the garlic and the olive oil. And I have no problem putting aside some things if I don't feel I have the glaze for them at the time, like on these uh, maple syrup jugs. I was real happy with the smaller Scrafito ones. And then also, as I've said, put things aside so that here's double bowls. These are so hard to make or such a nuisance that I made a ton of them. I like to do it and get it out of the way. Here we've got a mix of everything. There's some bisque. There is some greenware waiting to be fired. Some glazed pieces. Some that are glazed and finished. Okay, maybe what we need is better organization here. Okay, so inventory is building up. I've got my consignment shot. A couple of those filled well. I've got four crates in the truck to take to the farmer's market every week. Here's, I guess, what the little greater plates will look like, the small ones. And, um, you know, a um, chip and dip plate. For the summer, when I get back to pottery making, I hope to use a, my kick wheel again. I've even contemplated making a stamp that says, from a kick wheel. Okay, that was a very casual studio run through. If you're a potter, you know that's not all there is to the process. I've also been processing some clay, reprocessing some clay. Um, 
and uh, for a special order I've got I'm gonna do some luminaria and some face planters I've been getting requests at the farmers market and that's something I can say four to six or eight weeks and we can have it um, if I do a firing at least once a month through the summer so um, that'll be new to me and um, I did manage processing clay so far not to get any mud on my Eddie's pottery shirt don't want to get it dirty um, the um, let's see other thing I've been working on and I maybe will show a share a video upcoming on pots I've been making for the olive oil tap I did another run of these little bowls that are used as olive oil dipping plates. Um, I um, also these fit in the kiln um, between my pie plates, so I don't waste any space. If you saw my shorts video, let me know if I should do more of those. Okay, and uh, maybe I'll do a video of the pots made for the olive oil top. And maybe we'll hear from the weaver too. Okay, stop back and see what happens in the studio next week.